answer any questions, any queries you might want to know more about us, please feel free to ask. It had to be you, my son. Always. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm just curious, as always, um, why sudden change of the name from Wish for St. Basra to Wish Foundation? Uh, the main mission and vision is what the difference contains. The mission in Moisu Sanzanziba was the role model was Hussein bin Ali, who everyone knows here is the greatest, one of the greatest role models. But it used to define, it not give us a platform to have other role models. <laughs> So rather, we use WISH now, so we are free to choose any role model we want, so that we can <coughs> fulfill people's wishes. So it's not just we are confined to be to use Hussein bin Ali as a role model. I'm not saying that he's not the best role model. He's one of the best role models ever. But it used to inf not give us the room to go to check other role models who are there in this world. So that's where wish comes, and we are here to fulfill the wishes of the community at large. Thank you. Donate England, Europe, or not go nowhere. And so this video went all the way to Canada, Canada all the way to England, England all the way to Zanzibar. So I, I'm sure he made pretty much good awareness, and I'm sure he made uh, he got some funds. So when we went there, and you know, so we got involved, we took over the project, and we did the house. So where was he? And he's the same guy who went to Pemba last year, and he targeted a, a village that was near the village that we went to. So he went there, and he cried again, and he put numbers down: England, Oman, this, this, that. And then when we went there, we didn't see him. So we have to be very careful so to get in, you know, to be involved with other NGOs, other organizations that we don't know what their true intentions are. So I, I personally prefer to work independently. In terms of targeting different audiences, we try to go different parts of Zanzibar. So we don't focus to just one area. We go different areas to Zanzibar and make sure that we, you know, we reach out to different, different places. And one thing we do is we target these those villages that is very, very hard to get to. Like a Chongwa, my God. Literally, I kept telling my driver, are you sure you know where you're going? You're sure? Literally, it took us 20, 25 minutes to get by car, and there was a lady, there was a lady that we started off our journey right at the beginning at the road, and he was, you know, carrying Kuni. We were there, we went there, I did my business, to, so we took maybe 20, 25 minutes, and we're going back to the car, and the poor lady is just getting into the village. So we try to tar target those places where other NGOs find it very difficult to get to. The first pictures that you, that you saw, there was a first event. I was heavily pregnant, I was seven months. And I went out there and I didn't stop getting pregnant. And I got pregnant again and again and again. And I don't intend to stop myself. <laughs> but the work doesn't stop, whether it rains, whether it's, it's, it's windy, whether it's dangerous. I remember one time when we were going, it was the month of Ramadan, and we had containers to go just, and it was beautiful. What we said to ourselves, like, you know what? We'll go towards the time of uh, opening up fast, and sometimes you have people coming back from work, whatever the reason, they're in the, on the roads, that you know, they haven't gone back on time. So say we've targeted those kind of people, and randomly just give them iftar. And it was a crazy day, and we were fasting as well. But you know, we said we're gonna go out there and target these random people and give them. It was raining, it was heavy wind, but we still did our job. Come Corona, <sighs> Corona. I don't think I'll ever forget Corona. So, anyways, come Corona. It's very natural for our family and friends to be worried and be concerned. You know, I remember my mom calling me crying. Rena, I'm begging you, do not go out there. Think about your kids. You know, you've got young kids. 
And I was like, Mom, I know whatever you're saying is right, but that's the only reason why we're here. If we stop, who is going to go out there? And you know, at the time of Corona, where people were struggling, everybody was locked in, there was no work. Can you just imagine that 25 kg of, of goods that would last them two days, three days, depending on how big or small the family is, that those three days that they could serve food to their kids, that reason made me go out there. You know? So not only that we sacrifice and we do what we do out of love, but we are also very transparent with our donors. So there is no hidden agenda, there is no putting numbers here and there. So for example, Ali, Ali, so for example, if you want to sponsor a project from England and we tell you how many pounds that we, we need, and what we'll do is actually come back to you and tell you exactly how much we spent and where we spent. And sometimes, you know, we have uh, some balance that, you know, that, that remains with us. So I'll come to you and say, you know what, Ali, there's 20 pounds. Do you want to take it back? Or we can use it and randomly in other projects. And then that decision will be yours. So we're very transparent with our donors. They know where their money goes. And we're very careful also with their money. We, uh, we make sure that whoever that we come and ask for help from us, we do a thorough background, making sure they're very, very genuine people. And you'll be surprised how many fake people come up to us. You know, so we take time and effort to make sure that your money goes where it's meant to go and it makes the most difference. We should help them rather than just give things, you know. So one of the initiatives that we started was empowering women. And we are going to move away from women and we're going to start targeting more youth. For example, there was a case that came to us. There was a young uh, gentleman that was selling car. You know, and uh, so he, you know, he was talking to one of the members and was saying, you know, if I had the capital, I would have, I would have grown much bigger. So what we're trying to do is get people who are already doing something, you know, uh, you know, so, you know, give them the funds that they need to grow. Because what, what we need to do is we have to be very careful. You know, I mean, we had a case with a lady where, you know, she came up to us and she wanted to be empowered and she wanted to leave her job. And, you know, and she was quite elderly, so she's a massage lady. And I felt really sorry for her. I was like, you know, you're so old, you know, you shouldn't be doing this. And she's like, yes, yes, I can do this, I can do this. So we provided all the tools that she wanted. And she went back to her own job, you know? So it, as much as we want to make a difference in people's lives, we also have to understand it's not as easy or simple, you know, as it be. But slowly, slowly, inshallah, we'll get there. Esteemed guests, uh, members of uh, the Wish Foundation, my fellow trustees, Assalamu alaikum and a very good evening. My task here is a small but a important one as well, which is to thank you for coming and uh, thank everybody that has made this journey possible for the WISH team because they have been on quite a journey. I mean, you guys have seen what they have done. It's a group of uh, five very dedicated, selfless people who give out their time, their energy, their effort, even put together payday coffee bills, but uh, that's all part of the process. Uh, but I also like to make a mention to their family members, because sometimes when they're running around in Ramadan, early morning, seven o'clock, I wake up and I'm trying to look where my wife is, I don't see her till the evening, and I'm sure it's the same for the parents of Misa, who's not married yet, uh, Murtaza as well, my fellow trustee who's maybe babysitting at home and the wives are running around, and the newly married Fazle. So, a big round of applause for the family members, because they also have given up their time. All in all, they have shown you what they are capable of and what uh, they can do. None of it can be possible without the support of everybody. The government of Zanzibar, of course, and there are people from the government here, so a big, a very, very big thank you to them. A big thank you to fellow NGOs that are here. The board, the my chairman of the Zanzibar National Chamber of Commerce and fellow board members are here. This is the apex body for the private sector organization, so it's good to meet different people who can come together with different opinions and everybody can learn from one another. 
we have our scholar here, so he can be also enlighten us with scholarly advice, with people from Dar es Salaam. We have a quite, as they said now, they're no longer community orientated. They've opened up their doors to a wide variety of people in terms of thoughts, in terms of culture, in terms of accepting diversity in their organization. So hopefully this is a start to many things to come. I'm sure they'll take on board all the questions, including the question from Mr. Ali, which was brilliant. So you guys can, you have homework. It's always good to have homework that you can take back, rather than always sometimes a smooth sailing. Turbulence is, is important. It's part of the journey that makes it very beautiful. Be very, very generous with your donations as well, but not too generous so that I don't see my wife anymore, because every time I'm going to see where she is, she's in different parts of Zanzibar, and, and that would be good as well, but yeah, I don't want to say much because I've got to go back home with her, so nonetheless, thank you very much, I know it's been a good evening, and uh, thank you all for coming on behalf of the WISH Foundation, thank you very much.